Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some ranking. Based on the performance of previous ranking style videos, you guys, at least most of you, seem to enjoy them. So here's another. At this stage, I've ranked a lot of different types of characters. I've ranked the most powerful Slytherins, Gryffindors, Hufflepuffs, Ravenclaws, Auras, Death Eaters, Dumbledore's army members, Order of the Phoenix members, and more. But what I haven't done yet is rank the most powerful pure blood wizards in the wizarding world. Blood status is one of the most controversial aspects of the wizarding world, a concept in which wizarding families can be distinguished by the level of magically endowed family members. Generally speaking, people are slotted into one of the following categories, pure blood, half blood, or muggle. We're introduced to quite a few characters in the Harry Potter story that come from these pure bloodlines, and they certainly aren't afraid to remind us of it. <coughs> Malfoy's. However, what we must remember is that at the end of the day, pure blood status doesn't mean anything. The most powerful pure bloods are not the most powerful wizards. In fact, a top 10 list for the most powerful wizards would only include a couple of the people in this list. The majority of powerful witches and wizards in the wizarding world are actually half bloods. Before we get started, I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to omit the Hogwarts founders and the Peverells as they're sort of OP. Second of all, I'm going to try my best to only include one person from each wizarding family, as otherwise the list could get quite overcrowded with one surname. Thirdly, I want you to pause the video and comment your top 10 list down below before you dive in. Anyway, without further ado, here is my top 10 list of the most powerful pure blood wizards in the wizarding world. If I miss or forget a name that is deserving of a spot, please forgive me. Number 10, Bill Weasley. Bill Weasley was the eldest Weasley child, born as early as 1970. He attended Hogwarts between 1982 and 1989, and during this time he became both a prefect and head boy. Bill is considered by many to be the most powerful of the Weasley children, largely due to his occupation as a curse breaker, one who removes, counters, or breaks curses placed on objects. The profession is thought to be extremely challenging and particularly dangerous, requiring a complex understanding of magic and a proven ability to perform a broad spectrum of different spells. Bill was highly skilled in arithmancy, dueling, transfiguration, conjuration, charms, spell creation, divination, and even the dark arts. Bill was truly a powerful wizard. Before you say, hey, Molly was the strongest Weasley, watch the video a little longer. 9. Frank Longbottom Frank Longbottom doesn't make it into the story much, and that's because he's tragically incapacitated during the First Wizarding War. You see, Frank and his wife Alice Longbottom, the parents of Neville Longbottom, were both powerful auras that joined the Order of the Phoenix and opposed Lord Voldemort. Unfortunately for them, however, they were a little too good at their jobs, defying him on three occasions, as well as capturing and imprisoning many of Voldemort's Death Eaters. Because of this, they were honed in on and targeted. One day, Frank and Alice were attacked with the Cruciatus Curse by Bellatrix, Barty Crouch Jr., and Rodolphus Lestrange. Though the pair didn't die, they were unable to continue normal life and effectively went insane. Frank being targeted tells me that he was a very valuable asset for the Order, and likely a very powerful wizard who deserves a spot on this list. 8. James Potter James Potter was a British pure-blood wizard born March 27, 1960, to parents Fleamont and Euphemia Potter. Like the other Marauders, James was so skilled in the subject of transfiguration that he was able to become an Animagus at the staggeringly young age of 15. After successfully achieving this notable accomplishment, he was able to transform into a stag whenever he wanted. In order to accomplish such a feat, it was also necessary that James have sufficient knowledge of potion making, as becoming an Animagus for the first time requires an Animagus potion, a highly complicated potion that requires exceptional potion making ability. In addition to transfiguration and potion making, James was also a talented duelist, having defeated Snape on numerous occasions, and an accomplished practitioner of charms, having helped to create the Marauders map alongside the other members of the group. 7. Sirius Black Sirius Black, the godfather of Harry Potter and member of the Black family, began studying at Hogwarts in the year 1971 along with the other Marauders. During his time at school, he was a talented, though rebellious, young man with a knack for performing magic. While Sirius's magical development was somewhat stunted by the extensive amount of time that he spent in Azkaban, he still ended up being a supremely powerful wizard. 
In addition to being highly skilled at transfiguration and eventually becoming an animagus, assuming the form of a black dog, Sirius was also skilled at dueling, brewing potions, producing charms, producing non-verbal magic, and even occlumency. 6. Molly Pruitt Weasley Next up, we have Molly Pruitt, or as most of you know her, Molly Weasley. That's right, Molly hailed from the powerful, pure-blood wizarding family, the Pruitts. The Pruitt family produced many powerful witches and wizards, including Molly's brothers Gideon and Fabian, who died in the First Wizarding War while fighting off five Death Eaters. Molly's other most significant achievement was besting powerful witch Bellatrix Lestrange, one of the most powerful witches in the entire wizarding world and one of Lord Voldemort's most loyal followers. She was primarily portrayed as an unassuming motherly figure known for her caring and nurturing manner. However, during the Battle of Hogwarts, Molly proved that, in times of adversity, she's able to tap into levels of power that will give even the most powerful witches and wizards a run for their money. She was skilled in dueling, charms, healing magic, potions, transfiguration, and even the dark arts. 5. Horace Slughorn Professor Horace Slughorn was a British wizard that worked at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. He was a highly respected and accomplished man who served as both potions master and head of Slytherin House. He was a brilliant man and perhaps one of the most talented potioneers of his time. Slughorn was a triple threat. He was cunning, wise, and book smart, which made him an exceptionally powerful man. In fact, when the Death Eaters were returning, they tried time and time again to recruit Slughorn, who was rather modest about his own capabilities. What would the Death Eaters want with a poor, broken down old buffer like me? I imagine that they would want to turn your considerable talents to coercion, torture, and murder. As well as being a master potioneer, Slughorn was also a very talented duelist, transfiguration expert, Occlumens charms expert, dark arts practitioner, and, as it turns out, expert piano player. 4. Kingsley Shacklebolt Kingsley Shacklebolt was a British pure-blood wizard, Order of the Phoenix member, powerful aura, and later Minister for Magic. In his youth, Shacklebolt attended Hogwarts and performed particularly well on his newts, fulfilling all of the necessary qualifications to become an aura. Before eventually becoming Minister for Magic, Kingsley was a high-ranking aura, displayed a very powerful and balanced arsenal of magical capabilities. Shacklebolt's fellow Order members held him in a very high regard, and even Lord Voldemort himself considered Kingsley to be a powerful wizard. If that isn't an indicator of his level of power, then I don't know what is. 3. Alistair Moody Considered by many to be the most famous aura of all time, Alistair Moody was a very impressive wizard. Moody joined the Order during the First Wizarding War, and is said to be personally responsible for a very large portion of the witches and wizards in Azkaban. This earned him quite the reputation amongst the dark wizard community. Moody was a truly impressive dark wizard catcher and warrior. He would do whatever it took to win, and Moody served with great distinction during the First Wizarding War, even losing an eye, leg, and nose in battles against the Death Eaters. Moody was incredibly brave, but also extremely powerful, particularly in his prime. He was a master of dark arts, defense against the dark arts, dueling, charms, transfiguration, potions, herbology, apparition, flying, nonverbal magic, and even occlumency. 2. Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. was a British pure-blood wizard and the son of Ministry of Magic official Bartimius Crouch Sr. Crouch Jr. has a rich history with the Death Eaters and joined them in his teenage years. Barty Crouch Jr. famously kidnaps and imprisons the powerful Mad-Eye Moody, then teaches at Hogwarts School for an entire year in his stead. What's so impressive about this is that he was completely undetected, even by the powerful Dumbledore. Crouch was powerful in every area of magic and was known to be skilled at dueling, potions, charms, transfiguration, occlumency, nonverbal magic, and more. But what made Crouch truly dangerous was his intelligence, achieving 12 owls during his time at Hogwarts. I think that Crouch may be one of the most underrated wizards in all of history. Number 1. Bellatrix Black Lestrange Bellatrix Lestrange, born Bellatrix Black from the House of Black, was a frightening pure-blood witch that came from a long line of powerful witches and wizards with a twisted agenda. Bellatrix is undeniably one of the most powerful people in the wizarding world, and basically only comes after Dumbledore, Voldemort, Grindelwald, and maybe Snape when it comes to raw power. Bellatrix was a known proponent of the Cruciatus Curse and had considerable knowledge in the realm of the Dark Arts. She was also an expert duelist, charms expert, powerful occlumens, and tenacious warrior. Yes, Bellatrix was defeated by Molly Weasley, but I think it's safe to say that she just let her ego get the better of her. If she hadn't underestimated Molly, she may still be around today. And that concludes this list. How did my top 10 match up against yours? 
Did I mess up and miss any obvious ones that deserved a spot? Comment down below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.